Police are still searching for answers tonight. One man is dead, another in custody after a standoff situation with police in the city of Nina this morning. An officer was also injured in the standoff, treated for his injuries, and released this afternoon. We're taking a live look now where the police standoff began just before 9 this morning at Eagle Nation Cycle Shop. The building is still cordoned off with police tape. Authorities are still on the scene. The streets around the scene are still blocked off. The area was declared safe and there is no threat to the public after one man was arrested around 1 o'clock this afternoon. Nina Police Chief Kevin Wilkinson says investigators will not finish the investigation tonight. He says the building is large and a lot of evidence collection has to be done, including finding every round that was fired. It was just before 9 when gunshots broke the quiet at Eagle Nation Cycles in Nina. Police arrived on the scene and went inside, but officers were met with even more gunshots, and one officer was hit. Bullet struck the helmet um, up in his head area, and, uh, and the, the, uh, the helmet deflected that round from being able to penetrate his skull. Neighboring police agencies from all over the region flooded the 200 block of Main Street. Three SWAT teams moved into place knowing hostages were inside hiding from the gunmen. They were released unharmed. I don't even have good clarity on what the, um, what the initial issue was about, whatever, whatever set this person off and started this whole thing. We're still sorting through that. At one point, a gunman approached officers and refused their instructions. Came out, uh, he came out with a weapon in his hand and, uh, and uh, did not respond to the officers calls to drop the weapon. Police then shot and killed the man. After about four hours and a lot of gunshots, another gunman walked out and was taken into custody. If it can be shown that he is the one who fired the weapon that struck our officer, that he would be, uh, that he would be criminally charged with uh, attempted homicide. Chief Wilkerson says it's disappointing that one person lost their life. However, he realizes things could have been a lot worse. Brian Flatoff faces 11 new charges tonight, including felony murder. The Eagle Nation Cycle Shop co-owner Michael Funk was killed during the standoff. Now, it's still unclear who shot Funk, but tonight, through court records, we know that Flatoff wanted more people dead. The latest criminal complaint sheds light on what brought Flatoff, armed with a handgun and, quote, 75 rounds of ammo. There's bullet holes in his monitor screen to Eagle Nation cycle shop. The complaint says shortly after his arrest, Flatoff tells investigators he had, quote, every intention of killing Vance Dalton, a man with whom Flatoff had a dispute over a motorcycle. Flatoff tells police he went to the shop to get his motorcycle back and, quote, snapped when he saw it partially disassembled. All right, you are Brian Flatoff? The complaint goes on to say Flatoff told a hostage to call Dalton to the shop and that he was going to, quote, cut Dalton's throat and then kill himself. Flatoff tells police again, quote, I would have probably killed him. Can't bring him back. <laughs> That's what I want. Instead, Michael Funk, who police say had a handgun, would be the sole death. And I saw him out laying in the alley. Police opened fire on Funk after they say he refused to drop his handgun after exiting the shop. Now, Funk's daughter confirmed over Facebook today there will be a peaceful demonstration in front of Eagle Nation Cycle Shop Saturday afternoon. Flatoff, meanwhile, is being held on a half million dollar cash bond. Now, Funk was trying to escape from being held hostage when he was shot and killed by authorities. Today, police saying it's likely that only one of the nine shots fired at him came from his captor. And that, that has some in this community wondering if justice was actually served today. Many and Nina expected charges to be filed today against the officers who shot Michael Funk without giving any verbal warning. It was heartbreaking to find out what you just told me about how no one's being charged. I am totally disappointed. I think this is just absurd. Today, police did confirm that Funk did come out of the hostage situation with a gun in hand. If he didn't have a gun, he probably would have shot. He was being shot at by his hostage taker when he escaped, and police reacted. I think they did the right thing. That's my, you, know, you might disagree, but that's what I think. I think they did the right thing. Others, though, aren't sure that the force used was justified. My heart just broke for, for Michael. And that police should have shown more restraint in a situation like that. I think that Mr. Funk felt like he was going to be protected. The police were going to be there. If he ran out the door, the police would be there to protect him.
and that didn't happen. And while friends and family of Funk did get additional details about their loved ones passing today, those details didn't seem to bring any comfort. Now, as to why no verbal warning was given before Funk was fired upon by police, well, the chief says verbal warming, warnings to drop a gun, they just aren't always possible. The city of Nina experienced a significant and difficult incident on Saturday, December 5th, initiated by a person with criminal, even homicidal intent. And now one person is dead and others are physically and emotionally injured. It's our duty in these cases to provide accurate information that is not tainted by personal agenda and to do that quickly. Our citizens have a right to know what happened. At the same time, we have to be careful to not infringe on the investigation. It's not uncommon for groups or individuals to attempt to manipulate news media to create a biased and even false representation of an incident. That's why the Department of Justice recently issued a statement with limited information they wanted to counter false claims. Make no mistake, the Nina Police Department wants a thorough, unbiased investigation of this incident. We're advocating for full release of all video, statements, and other evidence in this case as soon as practical. The Department of Justice does a great job of posting their investigative reports on their website for all citizens to review, and we encourage people to read those reports. The duty now for both the police and the public is to be patient. A proper investigation takes time. And while we wait for truth, we must not be swayed by those who fraudulently claim to have it. Thank you. Mata faces charges, including murder. Today, he moved one step closer to a trial by jury. So, Brian Flatoff had few words to share in court on Thursday. The talking was done by the prosecution and his new defense attorney, who discussed with the judge how soon they could bring this year old case to trial. Flatoff's former attorney recently withdrew from the case, a case that involves Flatoff facing 16 felony charges for his alleged role in a gunfight with police and a charge of murder for the death of one of the alleged hostages, Michael Funk, who was killed by police when he exited the shop armed. The prosecution says they have 30 witnesses secured and ready to testify. And in a turn of events today, Flatoff's trial by jury was actually moved from just a couple of months away in March to mid-September so that his defense has more time to prepare. And as Flatoff's new attorney gets up to speed with the intricacies of this case, Flatoff will remain behind bars at the Wapan Correctional Institution. On Saturday, friends and family of Michael Funk gathered inside the Eagle Nation Cycle Shop to have breakfast and celebrate his life. We just like to get together at least once a year just to remember the positive things about him. Um, we had all his favorite foods. That's what we served today. You know, and we just want to do a celebration of life. We don't always want it to be a negative thing that, you know, when he was killed. The shop is still riddled with bullet holes, constant reminders of how a normal day turned into a nightmare. Steven Arado, one of the hostages and the owner of the shop, says the DOJ still won't answer all of his questions. The investigation lasted for five months of what happened here. All they talked to, I was one of the hostages and there was two other hostages. They only talked to us the day of the situation that happened here. They never talked to us again. And a DOJ investigation was full of inaccuracies that we wanted to ask questions about and they refused to answer any questions. The two Nina police officers who shot at Michael Funk were cleared of all charges by the Department of Justice, the agency which handled the investigation. Kay Reitz, one of Funk's friends, says she asked Wisconsin Attorney General Brad Schimmel why Funk's body was left near the alley for 45 minutes after Nina police shot him. The answer I received was because the shooter was still in the building and they feared that the police department, the police officers would be in the line of fire. My response to that was 45 minutes later, when they did finally come in and take Michael out, the shooter was still in the building, so what changed? During that press conference, Schimmel had explained that the Nina police believed that the hostage situation was actually a setup to lure in and kill police. After the Nina police had shot Funk, Schimmel said they left him there because they still believed it was a setup against them. We, want, we just want to be able to answer 
have our questions answered by the people that did the investigation. For the two-year anniversary of the shooting is on Tuesday. While Nina police were cleared by the DOJ, Funk's friends and family have hired a private investigator to look into the shooting. The accused shooter has pleaded not guilty and will appear in court in January for a motion hearing. His trial begins in March. Brian Flatoff in Winnebago County Court today for a final hearing before his homicide trial begins on Monday. Flatoff is representing himself. He's facing 16 charges, including felony murder in connection with the December 2015 standoff in Nina. During that incident, police say they mistakenly shot and killed Michael Funk. Because that happened during the commission of a crime, Flatoff is charged with felony murder. Still, Flatoff has decided to represent himself, saying his court-appointed lawyers have all let him down. Between, between the public defender's office and the district attorney's office, they have, whether knowingly or unknowingly, conspired in this case to destroy evidence or withhold evidence. The trial is expected to last two weeks. If convicted, Flatoff could spend the rest of his life behind bars. The plate that you gave me came actually Brian Flatoff. Now, well, one's everyone who just been advised he is in the back of the building again. He's by the workbench in the back of the building. Well, 131 shots fired, according to our caller, shots fired. Send bull cross the sofa guards. Send bull cross it. Shot fired. Copy. Move into the front. Move into the front. Fire 33, Gold Cross is coming down uh, church at Dodie Mountain. Gold 31, just finish. Go ahead. This point in time, officers appear fine. They have one of those hit. But again, we're stopped there. Uh, we're not sure if these are actually hostages or if the bait pile. So we back down. Multiple shots fired. We're right there waiting for us. Did you say an officer was hit? Ten four. He's fine. Ball top of helmet. Ten four. Thank you. 
Do you have an observation? Because we are west of your location. 